90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. Welcome to another edition of From the Press Box. My name is Rob Lennon. Joining me is my co-host, Tim Leonard. Hello, Tim Leonard. How are you doing? Good morning, brother. What was that again? Say I said good morning, yeah, brother. I, I am outstanding. Are you? You know why? No. Six days until the Super Bowl. I'm uh, calling this, brother. I want you to know. I am calling this Super Bowl LT. What, L- Lawrence Taylor's playing? It is Super Bowl 56. Man. I don't know what 56 is in, in Roman numerals, and L-V- I don't care. LVI. Because it is Super Bowl LT. LVI, baby. LT. What? It's real wrong. It's LT. L- LVI. Lawrence Taylor. Lawrence Taylor. LT. What's Lawrence have to do with this? Nothing. It's his, it's his number. So? He owns 56. He does, actually. So there you go. Anytime a number fifty six, since his number is retired, gets and it's, and it's football related. And he, he, if any player who has a number retired, usually when they sell that number, means they get a kick of it. Yeah. You know, Tom oh, Seaver, yeah. number forty one. Nancy Seaver and the daughters get some money. Michael Jordan probably makes a hundred million dollars just from selling. Makes a lot of twenty three not money. Uh, yeah, from the Bulls. Probably making twenty three million. Probably <laughs> does. So. But if you want to call it the LT, you know, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. Super Bowl LT. I like it. Doesn't it sound good? No. Yeah, it does. No, they, it they've does. been LV and I and no, LV, LVI2 and, you know, th- 3 or whatever. Uh, you know, yeah. you know I, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's part of my, uh, my, my, my revolt uh, against uh, Commissioner Goodell. You know, they've, I'm not happy with him. Con- He's not happy with me. I'm not happy. Considering, with him. brother, this this is Super Bowl week. There's a lot of N- NFL news that should not even be part of this. Exactly. This, exactly. If, if That's Roger, a good call, brother. Excellent if, if call. If Roger Goodell was the commissioner of the NFL, meaning like Pete Rozelle, and Pete would you know make a phone call and all of a sudden things change. Squash. Stuff uh, would get squashed. The the Washington Commanders wouldn't have been making that press conference the week when they did. That would have been that would have been for for a month. From don't now. they? I thought they banned all news during the two. Weeks. It was it used to be like that. It was just Super Bowl. Just hey, let's go get some press conferences. Let's let's hype up the game. Let's let's get it built up. I I've seen very little of of Super Bowl coverage. We've seen all kinds of Brian Flores coverage. Yep. We've seen all kinds of, of, hey, the NFL is racist coverage. We've seen the Washington Commanders, which is the dumbest name I think I've ever seen. Commanders isn't as bad. It's, it's I, I prefer Red Tails like you had. Red Tails were awesome. Uh, but Commanders, that doesn't bother me. Don't, don't like it. I, I, don't, I don't know anybody who likes it. Well, no one's going to like it. But uh, They were but, the Redskins. I would just call them the Reds, but that's something else. The they, there was so Reds. many, so many ways you couldn't go Reds because it's the Cincinnati Reds. It's it's so what you, you can't do. It. There's other teams named Eagles. College teams, yeah. Well, what? So what? I'm just saying. No, but uh, there, there's so much negative news going on in the NFL, or not Super Bowl news. And the Super Bowl has is, is, has always been a game where it's it's all about the hype. That's it. And, and there's so much hype that the game rarely lives up to the hype because there's too much hype. And and now this... Well, this, over the last but, 10 years, there's been some really good last minute. Yeah, I'm games. not saying the games haven't been good. There's been some, some really good games. But out of out of 55 previous games, very few of them have lived up to two that's, weeks' worth of hype. That's true. When you have two weeks of focus on one game. Yeah, and, and, and you know, it, it makes no sense. I mean, if you're the NFL, if you're Roger Goodell, you tell all the owners... Hey, folks, no announcements during the two weeks. Yeah, no that includes the Giants announcing their GM and their coach. You can say. It, it, well, they, that was done was before, the, before the league yeah. championship games. Oh, it was? Okay. Yeah. But still, that's very close. It, it is. But you, know, you either have to embargo everything yeah. for a couple of weeks. or you know, But the problem is with the Giants especially is you know, they, people would have known that they had somebody in place. Because Shane would have, Joe Shane would have been making phone calls. He would have been doing doing his job, and you know, Dable would have, would have been the guy coming in, and that that's what touches off everything else. Brian Flores certainly isn't isn't going to to hold back on on his announcement that he's suing the NFL. No, so because, because that you know that's a lawsuit. You know, and, and I I think I think Brian Flores is poss- quite quite possibly likely ended his NFL coaching career. I think, but he did. he's taking a stand, and I respect it. I, I don't, you know, I mean, we'll get into that in a, in a little bit. But, you know, I, let, let's talk about the game first, brother. 
because obviously by by this time next week we the, we the will we will have seen no the the Super Bowl Pro Bowl game was horrible. The, I, nobody watches the Pro Bowl. It, it was they, you know they, I I watched literally three minutes of the game yesterday. They were playing touch football out there. Maybe it was it was so ridiculous. Nobody w- was going for for any kind of tackles. It, it was it was just it was like it was literally like they were playing in 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 somebody's enormous backyard. I'd rather see them playing Madden or you know some video games. Yeah, you, you could do that. ESPN broadcast that every every year. There's a Madden tournament. I think the winner gets a hundred thousand dollars. Uh, but it was it was just it was ridiculous, and there was there's no point to it. And and I saw I saw the worst article, maybe that I've ever seen. I didn't even read the whole thing. But they said they said betting on the Pro Bowl. Why not? Why not this year? And I'm like, no, there's no reason to ever bet on the Pro Bowl ever. Mm. If you bet on the Pro Bowl, you're an idiot. Either that or you're a degenerate. It's one or the other. Uh, but that that, that, that's not a game one. to bet on. There's 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 no there's, there's there's no real impetus for either team to win. Everybody just wants to stay healthy. That's the only thing they want to do in that game. Well, that's why they shouldn't do it. I mean, yeah, exactly. They, they, they... Every other sport, I can see. Yes, play the game. You know, the the NHL has opened it up and they've made it. In fact, their All Star game was this week, but they've made it three on three. So there's not there's not a lot of contact. There's a lot of skating and there's there's a good amount of goals still being scored. But they've they've reduced the clutter on the ice, so there's almost no hitting. So that's great. Skills, goals. I mean, the only the only guys I feel bad for in the NHL All Star games are the goalies. Yeah. Because they they're they're the ones who have to deal with all, all the traffic and all the heat. But you know, I mean, it's entertaining. That's that's what it's it's basically you know they they've got they do the the the, the divisions against each other and they've turned it into like a, a massive overtime period. It's fifteen minutes of, of NHL overtime, which is all skating and offense and end to end action. That's great. I, I you know I enjoy that, but the only the one NFL I really like the is, NFL Pro Bowl game, it shouldn't be played. Just I, I like the NBA one because it's it's just showboating. Again, that's what. It, that's, but I I also fans feel bad if someone that. gets hurt. Because someone can just running, pull a muscle. Oh, I mean, in, and, in and the I, NBA, you could you could you know do a Bernard King and, and yeah. you know come down and come down off a dunk or something, and, and all of a sudden your your knee blows out. I mean, right. it's possible. It's it unlikely, is. but it's possible. And, and of course, uh, Major League Baseball is always the best, except for Pete Rose knocking Ray Fossey out. Right. You know, well, I was, I was trying have, to win. Might have been the only the might have been the only injury in, in MLB All Star Game he, he history. He deserves not to be in the Hall of Fame for that, actually. <laughs> but. Uh, but anyway, let's start off, brother. You want to start off the preview? Yeah, let, let, I just, I, let's just touch on the Super Bowl. Because obviously, by this time, like I said, by this time next week, we will have watched the Super Bowl. I, I, I think that, that we will have, we will have uh, been fairly happy that we saw a pretty good game. But I'm, I'm going to tell everybody this, and, and, and I am so confident in, in my, my selection this year, brother. I am telling people, bet my picks. Because okay. the Rams are a four and a half point favorite, the Rams are going to win this game by ten, and I will tell you why. Okay, it, it, it comes down to to two pretty simple and obvious facts, and and the first fact is that the Bengals' offensive line is not very good, and they've gotten this far because they they were able to play teams that weren't very good with the pass rush. Okay. All right. The, the 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 Chiefs knocked out the Bills, and the Bills would have come after the Bengals. But the 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 Chiefs weren't very good with the pass rush. Um, Joe Burrow, in fact, I think it was the first. It might have been the first game of the playoffs. Nine sacks, and and they still managed to win that game. The Bills' offensive line is, is desperately needs help. I don't know that it needs as much help as the Giants or the Jets' offensive lines, but. The the Bengals trust me on this, and they're, with their number one pick this season, we'll take a, a, an offensive lineman, because they took Jamar Chase last year. They got the wide receiver. They got Joe Burrow, his buddy, and those two have made a phenomenal team this year with a tandem. Where Jamar Chase has been had a phenomenal rookie season. Joe Burrow has obviously taken the next step in, in and is one of the top probably five or six quarterbacks in, in all of football in his second year, but. The Bengals can't protect him. And when you have Aaron Donald, who, as far as I'm concerned, still has one of the top three motors in, in the entire NFL, and Von Miller, who they brought over from, from the Denver Broncos uh, before the trade deadline and, and is one of those you know mercenaries and everybody's saying, oh, well, the Rams, the Rams bought the Super Bowl. Well, you know what? They traded their future. The Rams, uh, the Rams don't have a first-round pick until 2024. 
So the Rams aren't going to be able to keep this team together, and they're going to go south in a hurry. But this is they are here now for the purpose that this team was assembled. And, and the reason why the Rams gave up their future was to win the Super Bowl this year. Now, when you have Von Miller on one side and Aaron Donald on the other side, they're going to meet in the middle an awful lot on Sunday. Okay. And Aaron's going to say, hey, Von, how you doing? Missed you. I doubt that. Hey, Von, see you in the huddle. You know that. Von will say, hey, Aaron, that's a nice sack. I'd be really, really, really beat up Burr. Look at him. Listen to him moan. He's hurting. I would not be surprised if the Rams knock Burrow out of the game. That's how ferocious this pass rush is going to be. And the only way that the Bengals can counter this is if they turn Joe Burrow into Tom Brady and do a lot of three-step drops and, and have him unload the ball quickly. But if, you, if the Bengals do that, then Jamar Chase is well, negated. If you think about it, that's what the, the Jets did in the 69 Super Bowl. They threw, you know, they they didn't go deep as much as they could. Um, Matt Snell was given the ball a lot. Yeah, they they ran the ball they, effectively. They, they 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 held on to the ball a lot. Well, that's that. Joe Mixon is is go, for for the Bengals to have a chance. Joe Mixon needs to have a big game, which which is possible because it, it, with with Von Miller and Aaron Donald coming at you from the edges, it leaves a little bit of softness in the middle because there's only so many guys. Right. Right. But Mixon is going to have to break break runs, and he's going to have to establish the run so that the Rams won't be able to just pin their ears back and go after Burrow and and you know, do everything they can to to stop the pass. And the other the only other thing that they can do with Chase is screen passes or passes at the line of scrimmage and hope that he slips a tackle and turns it into into like a big game. But for, for them to do what they do, which is long passes from Burrow to Chase, takes time. And it takes, it takes four or five seconds, which Burrow is not going to have. Well, you know, that's, so that's that good, is good why point. I think that the Rams are, are the pick. I am not as confident about the over. The, under, the over-under is 48-and-a-half. I'm going over. I'm not as confident about that. I am very confident. About the Rams, I am not. And the I, Rams I actually, are going to be your Super Bowl. And champion. I'm not saying this to be a person to just say the opposite of you. I think the Bengals are on a roll right now. I think uh, um, it's important that they win, and they they know that too. Because this is the only time they're ever going to make the. Well, the, I, the I mean, Super Bowl. I don't think so. I mean, you got a good young quarterback. You you have you have they a, were a, a ten and seven this year. Right. Well, but that remember two years ago they were the worst team in football. You hear that, Jets? That's why we said that last week. They're, Giants. They're, the Jets the Jets have hope. They have some promise. The Giants don't because the Giants are at least a three year project, if not a four year project. But uh, you know, they, they, this is this is where the Bengals are, and with with some offensive line improvements in the draft. And depending on on how much salary cap room they have, but you you are you the Bengals are in a perfect position because Burrow is is on his rookie contract, so he's not going to cost the Bengals forty million dollars a year no. and take up that you know, enormous chunk of of cap space that that veteran quarterbacks take up. So the Bengals still have another another three years after this season to make it work with Burrow and and. I don't see why why they wouldn't be back next year. They'll just be better, or they should be anyway. And 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 if they can figure, like I said, if they can figure out the offensive line and and whatever whatever defensive players, they I mean, first of all, they need to get rid of Eli Apple. I mean, that, he's terrible. He's awful. He's he's one. As far as I'm concerned, he's one of the worst DBs in the league. So you know, there are tweaks that they need to make. But this is a team that that's still on the rise. The, the, the Bengals aren't going anywhere after this game, Whether, win or lose. If they win, I'll, I'll be stunned. But if if they if, if if they put it this way, if they win, they're going for a repeat next year, and if they lose, they're still in very good position. I, I also have a thing about, and I mentioned this yesterday on my free for all show, and uh, our good friend Steve Mandracina, host of Everything and Anything, yes, texted me and I said I wanted the Los Angeles Rams to lose also because I don't think the uh, the Los Angeles market deserves a team this good this fast, meaning that you know the, Los Angeles has a history of not supporting. 
um, I, I, their, their teams. I get what you're saying, bro. And here they are, second year there, third year, whatever it is, and their team's in the in the Super Bowl. I get so. what you're saying. But don't be jealous I, because, not, I, I didn't because the Rams are. I've never seen it made sound like I was jealous. Well, because the Rams are, are, a, are a better managed team than either the Giants or the Jets. I mean, I, the, 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 let's face facts. The reason that the Jets and the Giants have, have been so bad for so long is bad management. Plain and simple. Well, and 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 I'm I'm saying that goes all the way up to the no, owners. I'm, I mean I'm I'm just saying you know it's you think that you know the the L A fans would have to prove that you know hey we but deserve it, this but it doesn't team. matter. No, I know it's, I know that it doesn't matter about anything. I'm just saying it's, as it's, as an outside force for me. You know sometimes you pick teams uh, to root against because they're color, you know, the color of their jersey or something. So. I'm or sometimes you pick, or sometimes you pick a team to root for because they have a cool jersey, yeah, like the Chargers. Yeah, the Chargers, okay. the Los Angeles Chargers. Yeah, Los Angeles Chargers. So anyway, the, cool, the powder blues, the best NFL uniform. I, I, I agree with you. I don't think it's going to be it's going to be over forty eight, but uh, I'm not sure. Four and a half points is not a lot, brother. You know, I expect. It, I mean, it's a chunk. It, it's it's not it's, really. it's it's a risky because if it, if if look at how many playoff games have gone gone to the last last second field goal. Four and a half points is is a bit of a chunk. And and it actually the this the spread actually started at three and a half. At three and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I mean I'm 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 with the Rams. And and I would I would even go up to six and a half and yeah. not even not even sweat this. I'm 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 unless Matthew Stafford has a terrible game, and Matthew Stafford is no he's no lock. Matthew Stafford's a good quarterback. I like him, he's a veteran, he's been around, but He's never been in the Super Bowl. He's never he hasn't ho- hasn't played a whole lot of big games being the quarterback of the Detroit Lions. So now he's in this obviously the biggest game of his life. But let's face it, last week he wasn't very good. Right. Until the second half. He was terrible in the first half. So you know, this is what we have to deal with is What's Matt? We have no clue what Matthew Stafford's going to do. We have no clue if, if he is, you know, going to need to change his drawers at halftime, I, because we don't know how he's going to play in a big game. But right. I, I have to expect that as a veteran quarterback, that he is going to be the guy to lead his team. And if, if what happens defensively for the Rams happens the way I think it will, and I. I'm confident that it will, then Matthew Stafford probably will need to score at most 27 points to win the game. Yeah, that's Because I don't see the Bengals getting more than about 17. But that would be, what, 44, so that would be under. So, well. Yeah, a little bit under. Yeah, so, that's why that We'll see what happens. It's tough it's, 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 you know, The over-under, Vegas credit. They, they put a tough number up there. That's why they pay the big bucks. I know. Exactly. Those guys get paid big bucks to look at this stuff. Exactly. And so then, And then they throw, like, like on Thursday, they might throw a half point one way or another just to – Screw what people said. They love doing that. I know. I would too. The shifty action. It's it's called we want your money. Shifty action. That's we what want you your do. money. Anyway, let's uh, talk about uh, the NFL Washington football team, which is now officially known as the Washington Commanders. Uh, you say it's dumb. I, I, I didn't. I didn't say dumb. I just said I don't like it. Uh, I don't think it's a good name. I think I liked what you said last year. The Washington Red Tails, which has a history of. Um, uh, black history. Yeah, they were they were a fighter squadron, right? And and, and that, I mean it's it's a perfect name for the D.C. area right. because it, it 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 invokes the military. Yep. It it also you know you you go from being you you go from having this, this racist Indian symbol as as your team name that Daniel Daniel Snyder dug his heels in and I think it was what 2013 or something said I am never changing the name of this team and not only then do you go from from that racist symbol that you cl- said you were never going to change to going to going the exact opposite and honoring this 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 fighter squadron of black pilots it would have been what, nice. i mean nice. uh, talk and about public keep, relations cool and and plus you keep the red in there so it's the washington red yeah you tails. could do you could do you could all your colors red and burgundy or yeah, well, uh, burgundy keeping, and gold they, keep them they're keeping those anyway yeah um so it's now the washington commanders i don't mind that name there could have been worse names i don't know did they have a vote on this you know, like when the cycle they had a, they had a, a final ten. I don't know. I'm assuming there was probably some kind of vote in D.C. and obviously they had some, you know, name the team contest, which is where all these teams came from. But how Red Tails wasn't in the final ten? 
Well, they don't listen the to the show. The best name that, that they had didn't even make the final 10. Well, they, they didn't pick it. You know, they didn't pick that name. You picked that name. Well, it was out there. Oh, it was that, out there. The name was out there. It wasn't, it oh, wasn't okay. like I'm the only one oh, who had it. I thought you were the only one who came up No, with. no. Oh, okay. No, I, I have to give somebody. I don't even know who I'm giving credit to, but some I I saw that elsewhere. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll admit I, I didn't is, know anything I, about the Red I, Tails. I, I have no problem with Commanders. <laughs> I just think that it's. Yeah, I can see them changing it. They're already session. making jokes though. Like when 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 Washington goes to play at Kansas City, it's going to be the Commanders and Chiefs. Okay. Well, yeah. uh, it's kind of lame. Commanders versus the Cowboys. You know, I don't know. That's the only thing they care about. You know, the fact that uh, Dallas is still in the Eastern Division is, is ridiculous. Right. Well, but here's, here is the, uh, the, the rationale that, uh, that I saw from, from uh, the, the Washington team leaders, uh, team president Jason Wright and coach Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera has been a guy who, for years, not just since he's been with, uh, with, uh, with the, the Washington franchise, but way before that, he's been fighting for uh, you know more uh, racial equality in the NFL. Um, but they said that the franchise would like to incorporate the military because of its connection to the nation's capital. Uh, commander is a term used most often in the military as a naval officer rank, but it can also be used as a generic term. Right. So, okay. Uh, first of all, they don't play near the nation's capital anymore. They play outside of the I know, world. but they represent the nation. They represent D.C., wherever yeah, they play. It's yeah. like, you know, it's like There's the Jets a lot of the Giants play in New Jersey, but they represent New York. They yeah, represent the Metropolitan area. a lot of people from Virginia, too, you know. Right. If you were to put an a, a NFL team in Virginia, they would sell out in, like, 12 seconds. But but the the Redskins, or the right, the, the now Commanders, practice in, in Virginia. They practice in Ashburn, Virginia. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so. That's like the Jets uh, practicing in all Florham the Park. Florham Park. Yeah. yeah. So Florham yeah. or Florham? Florham. 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 I used to work in Florham. Your yes. your old stomping ground. So I I'm just I'm not not like I said not a fan of the name. I understand why they picked it. I just think that that there were there were better choices, and and I'm just I, I don't know I I don't know why this. But all right, fine, go for it. If if there's any kind of appreciable backlash to it. Then they'll change it again in a couple of years. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I think, you know, this is the least thing for the, the Washington commanders now to be worried about because they, there's a lot of things with little Danny Snyder, you know. Well, the, that's the biggest problem the team has is that Snyder still owns the team. <laughs> you know, he's never selling it unless, you know. Why would he? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, look, look at it this way. There are a lot of franchises out there these days that – the teams will 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 stay in the owner's hands until that person dies, and then it transfers over <laughs> a lot of times to the family. Yeah, like uh, the Steinbrenners did. But but with the Mets, with the Wilpons, when they sold, I mean, how many people were stunned when they heard that news? They were thrilled, but they were also stunned. Well, yeah, because the Jeffy was little. Jeffy was supposed to be the guy who takes over exactly because he had you know worked the Cyclones. That's that was the reasoning. But the, uh, but, but the but, point, but he still they still have five percent, right? But the point, the point being that there is no reason for Snyder to sell the team. No, no, he doesn't care if people don't like him. He's raking in money. Why would he sell a cash cow, unless unless he can get massive amounts of money for it, and and he just he just decides that that he he's sick of, of taking taking so much crap from the public, crap that by the way he deserves. Hey, we, and we, he's brought on himself. Our cousin Kevin, for years, when when his children were born, like 85, 86, somewhere around that, he put down on the season ticket list their names. Right. Sort of as a joke. But eventually they came up. They came up. And, and, and they, he had eight he, tickets. He kept, and he kept them for what? Like two or three seasons? A little more than that. But after that, three or four, says, whatever. This team is horrible. The team is horrible. And, and he gave up and, on it. And everybody was drunk at the games and they were fighting. And it well, was just, it was an, it was an, he, he said it was a nasty environment that he wanted no part of. And nowadays, they barely even watch the games because Snyder is such a bad owner. They don't, they almost don't care anymore. No, that's, it's, it's, you know, it's a bad thing with the, he's, he's kind of, Snyder has beaten the spirit out of, out of, out of the, the fans, and now the George Allen over the hill gang guys, and that attitude, and the fans who like that over the hill, yeah, and the hogs, atti- and the hogs are all gone, and da- little Danny Snyder yeah. is 
And know, he was sure. he was he's hoping that Commanders is some kind of bounce for the team and some and, kind and, of and well, because motivational pe- thing. And because people gets, will always go out and buy new jerseys. You know, even though the jerseys will look the same, I, pro- I assume the colors they, will be the, the same. The colors are similar. The jerseys are actually pretty nice. The jerseys are the best part about the, this whole rebranding is the jerseys look cool. Yeah. They, even even I'm not crazy about the colors. I've never been crazy about the colors, but the jerseys do look pretty good. All right. By the way, I, I want I want I want to hear from uh, from the listeners. I, it, they, give us a call. Five one six five seven two seven four four zero. Tell tell me what you think about Commanders. Tell tell me what you would have named uh, the the Washington uh, football team. Uh, and and uh, please no profanity. There was talk they were going to call them the Presidents, which is a that former, that, would, that would have been worse than Commanders. Th- there's, which is a former team name for a Washington team. I want to say it's the NHL at one point. Uh, it probably was one of the soccer or, teams or something. Or, no diplomats. That was diplomats, but I know I, I think before diplomats they might have they might have been a team called Presidents or something. Yeah, but stupid name. No, that was that would have been dumb. Let's talk about Brian Flores. Um, he is the former Miami Dolphins coach who has filed a lawsuit against the NFL accusing the league of racism and discriminatory hiring practices. I'm a little shocked by this, and I agree with you, brother. He is not going to be coaching again, um, maybe on the USFL teams that are coming along in a couple of weeks. Maybe no. one of them will get hired, hire him. Who knows if they haven't hired everyone already. I, I don't even see him well, bothering with that league. Eventually. Well, you know what? Sometimes you have to go someplace where just to show you still have it, even though he obviously does because he, he was very good with Miami last year, you know, one seven a- in a after, row. After after the terrible start, he got them back into playoff contention. Here here's here's what I want to say about Brian Flores. Number one, I, I, I support his 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 lawsuit. I, I support the the idea that black coaches and black GMs are vastly underrated or underrepresented in the NFL. Um my only issue with what happened is the timing because Brian Flores filed a lawsuit when there were still six openings right in the NFL. I am a hundred percent confident that he would have gotten one of those jobs. Why would because he? Because he, he, he's, he's too good a coach to not get hired by somebody. Now that being said, your boy, Josh McCown, is rumored to be in line to become the coach of, I believe it was the Jacksonville Jaguars or the Houston Texans, one or the other. Okay. Houston, Houston Texans, my bad. And he's never coached. He's been a quarterback on who knows how many teams. He has never coached football, and now they want to they want to throw him in as, as the head coach of the Houston Texans, uh, which I, that's seems kind of silly. It doesn't bother me if if they but, trust him. You know, Doc Rivers went to be a coach without – you know, doing any other coaching before you know became a head coach. There's well, been other players, managers too. Uh, uh, Bucky Dent would be one of them. Uh, uh, Aaron Boone, I believe, was Aaron Boone. Aaron Boone came out of the TV booth. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of people who've who've done this without stepping and you know earning their right. Their I understand, and I understand that. But why hire a, somebody who's never done it? Somebody who you don't even know if he can do it. When somebody like Brian Flores. Is available, who has already proven he can do it. Well, if I'm and do it with with a, with a flawed, flawed roster. Is, and you just said it. There are six jobs opening or open, and he probably would have got hired for one, and then he probably wouldn't have sued the NFL. Right. So why would you set yourself up? I would w- would have waited. Right. That's then, that's my point. Is that why not it, why not wait until it plays out, or at least wait until maybe there's like. One or two jobs left, and if he still hasn't gotten hired, and if he's not interviewing for either of those jobs, or if if you know he's not getting a second interview or whatever, fine, then lower the boom, right? Because then you're justified in saying, you know what? How many bad football teams just hired coaches, and have not, the only coach that I could say who got hired, and I would say, all right, yeah, he's probably a better coach or he, he was in a better situation than Brian Flores, is Doug Peterson. Because Doug Peterson won a Super Bowl. Right. I mean, he left Philly on bad terms, and, and a lot of his players ripped him. But the guy's got a ring. And Brian Flores doesn't as a head coach. Right. You know, he, he's from the Belichick tree, so they all have rings as assistants. But 
you know, but at least Brian Flores showed that he can do the job better than Joe Judge and better better than a bunch of bunch of guys from the Belichick tree, which really has has been for the most part a lot of rot, because not a lot of Belichick assistants have have had any kind of success at all as head coaches. So, to 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 put this lawsuit out there at such an early stage. And part of the issue is because of the text that he got from Belichick. Right. And for whatever reason, Belichick thought he was um, texting with, with Brian Dable, but he didn't text anything that nobody here didn't think. As soon as Joe Shane got hired as a Giants GM, Brian Dable was a prohibitive favorite to become the, the, the next head coach of the New York Giants. And and I could I could see Flores being upset with not getting the job simply and only because he's a Brooklyn guy and he's a New York guy and obviously he knows what it's like here and he more than likely would have thrived here in terms of the spotlight and the media and, and all of that stuff. But Dable was going to be the guy. So the fact that that Flores takes the the text from Belichick, and apparently the text came in even before Dable had gotten his second interview. So when you're talking about when you're talking about a guy, and the Giants put this out in in a in a release, but are are they going to hire a head coach based on a 20 minute Zoom call? Of course not. No. You're going to have a second interview with somebody. That interview is going to go for hours, and you're really going to get to know a guy and say, all right, is he our guy? So. Already, there were kind of some flaws in Flores's accusations as, as far as the whole Dable situation goes. I, Bill Belichick doesn't know what's going on in the Giants' room. No. Who's, who, who's, I mean, unless, unless other coaches are, are texting with him, guys who have had interviews, and say, all right, hey, coach, this is how it went. But I, I don't know that Dable has a connection to Belichick. So why would Dable text Belichick? There's no reason for it. Unless it was a mistake, who knows? But you know the way Belichick goes. reached out. Hey, Brian, congratulations! I hear, I hear it's going to be you. Well, I, I could have made that text. Anybody, anybody who 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 was even the least bit observant about New York sports knew that Dable was. Unless Dable screwed it up, he was going to be the guy. Right. So, and that happens. You know, you bring in your own guy. You yeah. Know? But again, I I support Brian Flores because I think there's a a, a very relevant point here and, and there's also talk that that Hugh Jackson might join Flores' suit. I think I think Hugh Jackson has far less of a case than than Flores does because Hugh Jackson was well, I thought he was a terrible coach with the Browns. But Hugh Jackson is saying that like Flores did, Flores is also saying that that the Miami Dolphins owners offered him bonuses for every loss in well, the year the before the two what, what if I always say I don't, brother. I don't know. You, you always talk about you know teams should lose so they can get the top pick, and I always said you can't do that. And the coaches are going to well, do it. Well, I don't. I don't. I don't say GM that. I, higher. I say that that's the the benefit of losing. But I I am I am the one who's always saying that players are not going to play to lose because they want to play to make sure that they're on the You're roster sure next that, year. I am a hundred percent sure I, I, about I thought, that. I thought otherwise. Players are playing. T- they play every game to win. Because the difference between being on an NFL field and emptying a truck at Food Town is several hundred thousand dollars. Well, more than that. So that's what the players are playing for. Players don't care about what fans want in terms of moving up in draft picks. Players are playing every week to impress a coach to say, hey, I can get one more year out of this and one more year at minimum, what, like four or five hundred thousand dollars. I wonder. I wonder of the teams that remaining who need head coaches. What if you had to say to Mr. Flores, "Come on, we want to hire you." He, he would. I'm sure he would take the job. Then, then his lawsuit becomes worthless. I, I, I think the lawsuit might still go through. I think any team. I think that's why he's not going to get offered a job. But because I would any do that. team. That would be me. Well, but any team who is going to to say, "Yes, come aboard." It it they're they're inviting all kinds of problems. It, it almost it almost turns into Colin Kaepernick situation. Colin Kaepernick certainly should have had a job, and and certainly at the very least could have been a backup quarterback for somebody. 
but nobody was going to give him that job. And he got $20 million from the NFL after, well, after the lawsuit. Well, hey, if Brian Flores gets $20 million from the NFL, but I'm sure he'll Colin be happy about it. has never played again and never will. Well, you know, this way you, you, know, you save $20 million. Or it, at least to play, pay it for your coach. Right, but Flores obviously wants to enact change. And the only way, why well, I shouldn't say the only way, but the best way to enact change is you got to put your own head on the line. I don't know. I don't know if I would do it. Kaepernick did it, and and it, and it, and it, I, it resulted I, in change. I, I don't think Kaepernick did anything. I, I still I, believe I, that. I disagree with I, you 100. percent Because he did it. I say it again. He did it where no one was looking, and if no one's looking until everybody's looking, what are you talking no, about? No, until Trump opened his stupid mouth and started knocking him. No one knew that Colin Kaepernick was doing this. Yes, they did. Uh, not Trump not a, amplified it. Whether whether yeah, whether that was his, he, it certainly wasn't his intention. All he wanted to do was rip Kaepernick. Well, he also but, wanted to rip the NFL, which has twice uh, ignored him when he tried to buy a franchise. Well, yeah, but that was that's because he has a vendetta, yeah. and, and he and he cloaked it as something else because that's what Trump does. He he doesn't want you to know the real reason why he's ripping people. My favorite thing about Michael Cohen they were they were setting up to bu- try to buy the Bills and right. And Trump said, "Yeah, say, say I'm worth ten billion dollars. We're not going to check. <laughs> yeah, the NFL is not going to check. Yeah, the NFL. Every, everybody checks. Ever since ever since John Spano, everybody checks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Anyway, we're going to take a break right now. You're listening to ninety point three WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. The show from the press box here every Monday, nine a.m. to ten a.m. I'm Rob Leonard. He's Tim Leonard. Tim Leonard. Give us a call five one six five seven two seven four four zero. We'd love to hear from you." All hit music. For all those songs radio has forgotten about, join me, Big Ed, Mondays from 10 a.m. till noon for the Good Gold Show. We'll bring back all the great hits of the 50s, 60s, 70s, and more. The sounds of doo-wop to disco, all the Motown soul and great rock and roll. We'll even take your requests and dedications to the Good Gold Show. Music. On the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC and streaming on the iHeartRadio app. Welcome to the Lions Coffee Shop. May I take your order? <laughs> One black coffee with sugar, sweet and low. Oh, don't forget a dash of 90.3 WHPC. <laughs> we don't have that, sir. <gasps> sure you do. All you have to do is tell your smart speaker to play WHPC on your Amazon device. Play us all day, every day, on your smart speaker, the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. If you think all the great music has already been written, think again. Hi, I'm Kim Tracy, and I will prove to you that great new music is still being produced today. Join me on High Fidelity every Sunday at 9 a.m. for a mix of music with a focus on new music and lesser-known artists exclusively on the voice of Nassau Community College worldwide on the iHeartRadio app, the TuneIn Radio app, nccradio.org, and always on 90.3 WHPC. I want to get back to being in my community group. I want to continue having a soccer season. So I can throw parties again. (laughs) So I can go to her parties. (laughs) It'd really be nice to dine in instead of getting delivery for a change. So I can feel safe and protected for myself and my students. We each have our own reason for why we're getting vaccinated against COVID-19. What will yours be? Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org for information on the COVID-19 vaccines. It's up to you. Brought to you by the Ad Council. You know, brother, I've never seen Duran Duran live. Amazing, brother. You, you know all their songs by heart. Not really. But I'm just remembering. I, don't, I've never, I never saw them live. I've seen The Alarm. You know? I've seen R- R.E.M. Taste. I've Good seen taste. Squeeze. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I never saw, never saw the Stray Cats either, considering they're from our hometown. Yeah, but they were playing England back then. Yeah, I know. But they actually playing like at a, what was that that hole in the wall? Nice. Now, it's, remember we went to have dinner, uh, lunch with uh, Gary and Mikey a couple of years ago? 
I've never, yeah. The place in Mashpee? Uh, Heckle and Jekylls. Heckle yeah. and Jekylls. Yeah, we never went yeah. past it. That was pretty close to our house. We just never went past it. Well, so anyway. I think we were a little young well, back then. Well, we could have gone at 15. They didn't check back then. <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were drinking in the woods. Yes, brother. Anyway, um, you're listening to From the Press Box right here on 90.3 WHPC. My name is Rob Leonard. He's Tim Leonard. 516-572-7440. Um, like I, you know, Brian Flores, you know, is he going to prove anything? The thing that I would like to see is is about lo- the uh, the Dolphins telling him to lose so they can get the draft pick. That's much more important to me. That that's, the, that's the bombshell here. That is the bombshell because um, it says, well, we don't care about this season. So you know, should then a fan get involved and say, well, they were trying to ruin our season. Why should we pay for these tickets? Exactly, and that's you know they because the, the organization wanted Tua, right. and, and Tua ba- at that point. You know, there was a lot of talk about tanking for Tua. Right, right. And if, if there is proof of that, then obviously that's 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 going to be that's going to be a ba- a massive thing. The racism and and, and, and the, the systemic racism in hiring is obviously the thing that gets the headlines. But in terms of the NFL and the integrity of the game, tanking for Tua. And paying your coach bonuses to lose is a really dangerous precedent, and and that's the part that I worry about because that's to me much worse than the coach hiring or anything else. It it it, it, it goes right to the heart of the integrity of the game. Yep. So you know we'll see. It, it's uh, I, I'm I'm I, I'm I'm eager to see how this plays out. Let's put it that way. Um. Just quickly, I'm going to go NHL All Star Game, brother. The uh, the Metropolitan Division defeated the Central in in the uh, final five to three. So good for the Metropolitan. That was uh, at, um, uh, the Islanders Division. Philadelphia Flyers uh, forward Claude Giroux, the captain right. of the Metropolitan team, was named the MVP and received a new Honda Passport Ooh. for scoring three goals in the tournament. Wow, I, I, that's the car. <laughs> That's the car, a Honda Passport. Can can we get a better? I know, that's what I'm saying. It's a better Honda. Honda Passport. I, I'm just uh, poor. You know, it's it's amazing to me that the Flyers even had an All Star, but but now he's he's got to go home with a Honda Passport. Yeah, well, his teammates are gonna laugh at him. So well, I don't blame him. Good for him, but the players split a million dollar prize. So okay, that's that's, that's pretty nice, and, and they're splitting it between. I think it's about thirteen players. He probably coaches probably gets get a taste. Uh, it is the third time the Metropolitan Division has won the All Star Game in six seasons that that they uh, the NHL has used the three on three tournament format. So I, think about how many guys have been on all of those teams. Sure, that's a nice little chunk of that. So that's another like uh, what almost three hundred thousand dollars. No. Million 13, 13 guys and a million. It's almost a hundred grand a piece. So I figure I don't know, two fifty or so. You, you, you got a nice chunk of change there. Thirteen divided into a million is it's about uh, uh, about almost eighty grand. Yeah, eighty grand. Or um, yeah, it's about eighty grand. No, uh, yeah, 80, yeah. Almost. So eighty. So that's two fifty almost. It's in that range. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, it is. Trust me, brother. I know math. Yeah. So um, the Metropolitan had defeated the, the Pacific Division in the first game, six four. Uh, the Central came back and, and smashed the Atlantic Division 8-5 to five in the next game. Uh, then the Metropolitan came out in the last game. And, and I don't know if it was because the Central had just played or maybe they were a little tired. But the Metropolitan came out and, and just took it to them in, in, in the final. Um, the Metropolitans went up 3-1 to one in the first four minutes and 50 seconds. Never trailed. Um, the Central Division got uh, got to within one goal twice, but it was always the next goal was always Metropolitan. So I, I always like for them. I, I I like when they they shoot at the plates. I always like that. Oh, yeah, that's the skills competition. Yeah, I like the skills. I like the. I'd rather watch the skills competition with all the games. You know, I like when they do the three pointers with the and um, the NBA and they right. do the, the dunking and everything. It's a lot more fun. You know, because they're not they're not taking it serious. You know, you know, sometimes especially in the NBA, they're always they're always knocking each other, having fun. You know. You know, busting each other's chops. Having a good time, yeah. Yeah, so it's very school schoolyardish, and that's what I like about it. So, anyway, what's going to happen with the Islanders, brother? We're at the midway point of the NHL season. Uh, they are not doing what they should be. 
Um, there's a good chance they're not even going to make the playoffs. I'm going to give this. I'm going to give credit on this to Peter Body of uh, of now the New York Post. He is the guy who tweeted this, and, and it, it made so much sense because if you he, he said if if you would have asked him before the season started who were the New York teams that had the best chance of winning a title, it, it would have been the Islanders and the Nets. And right now, the Islanders don't are so far away from the playoffs. I don't care about games in hand. They're still far away from the playoffs. And the Nets are sinking like a stone. They lost their eighth games, eighth eight straight game yesterday. How, how does that happen? Because they have four starters hurt or out. Kyrie's only playing on the road. Durant is still out for another few weeks because he's got the MCL sprain. Uh, Harden's got a, a bad hand. Um, uh, what's his well, name? Well, you know uh, what happens in a couple of weeks, brother. I hate to say this because, um, but I think in a couple of weeks they they take away some of the rules concerning COVID and mask wearing and other things. I I really think after <coughs> I don't I don't think that it's going to make a difference for Kyrie. But they might not need a vaccination. Um, you know, I don't I don't think we're 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 there yet. But who knows? Maybe if it happens, then then Kyrie becomes a full time guy again. But. You know, it's 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 still go- going to be an issue for until the, the, the those mandates get lifted. And is it possible? Sure, it is. I mean, the numbers are starting to come down. The Omicron has has seemingly made its way through society or yep. most of society, New York society anyway, because it's still all over the place in other parts of the country. I don't know if we saw the the sixty minutes uh, <laughs> no. No, no, uh, no. item that they did yesterday. The, the hospital, the the healthcare system is just overwhelmed still. And, and and part of the reason it's overwhelmed is because so many nurses and doctors have quit. They just said, no, I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm not working 60 days in a row and 12 hours. I mean, these people are just tired and fed up. And, and they, they actually had um, uh, a nurse or a breathing specialist yesterday. And she was talking about how she's treating these people. And she admitted that, that there are times when she looks at them and says, why, you know, like says to herself, why didn't you avoid this? Why didn't you get vaccinated? You wouldn't be here. I know that. That's the so, thing. If you get vaccinated, at least you're probably not going to go to the hospital. You might get you might get a variation of it. Um, yeah, but you're not going to you're not going to go to the hospital. And you're not going to die. And you're not going to have problems breathing. So, so anyway, get the, get anyway, brother, I'm, I'm I, I got off topic a little bit here. But as far as the Islanders, if if I'm Lou Lamorello, the Islanders GM, I got to I got to make. I got to make the call and say and t- say we're playing for next year. Because let's put it this way, the Islanders are in a situation right now where they're going to pl- have to play 3 months worth of playoff hockey. Just just to maybe get right. a wild card. And that that means Lou would have to bolster the lineup instead instead of being a seller at the trade deadline, he's going to have to be a buyer. Which means he's going to have to mortgage some piece of the future to bring in a guy who's going to going to help and make some kind of a difference, and and that's to maybe we'll get get a wild card spot. Well, this, get this, brother. Right now, the Islanders are sixth in the Metropolitan Division. Right. They've played thirty nine games. Right. Uh, the Rangers have played forty seven. So have the Capitals and Pittsburgh's played forty six. So, but they're not going to get up to that level. They have to get a past Columbus, basically. Who's in fourth? Uh, Washington, 25 and 13. How many points? Uh, 59. The Islanders are 38. So they're 21 points. 20, and how many how many games do the Islanders have on in, in hand on Washington? Uh, they have eight. So, so that's 16 points. So they're still five points behind them, right. even if they win every, every game, one of those yeah, games, which yeah. we know is not going to happen. The closest they have right now is really is Columbus um, at five. At, they're 20 and 22, and they're only two points, three points ahead of the Islanders. But if you go down they'll, to they'll the They'll pass Columbus at some point, but that doesn't matter. Yeah, I know. Um, and then the Atlantic Division, how does it go? The f- top eight of the whole thing? It's top three from each division, and I think it's the the two after that. So that's why I'm saying it's 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 a maybe. The wild card is a maybe. Yeah. Well, you have uh, Florida at 69, Tampa Bay at 66, Toronto at 61, Boston at 55. Detroit's the closest thing with 46 points. So they, they have to get at least up to 55. Right. Uh, and they are way behind that. But that's <laughs> my 17 point. 17 points. If, 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 I, if I'm Lou Lamorello. And they, uh, Boston only has four games more than the Islanders. So. 
which makes it even worse. It does. But if, if I'm Lou Lamarillo, I'm taking a hard look at this season, and I'm just I'm going to say, you know what? Everything that could have gone wrong this season went wrong. And, and there's not a whole lot we can do about it. We had to start the season with 13 straight games on the road because our building wasn't ready. Then we got COVID, and the NHL made us play all these games in a row where we were playing with Bridgeport, and, and we, there we had no chance of winning games. Yep. So everything, like I said, everything that could have could have happened, and, and now we're going to have to play all of these games later in the season where we're going to have to play like four games a week when everybody else is playing two or three games a week just to make up the games. So at, at that point, there's going to be fatigue setting in and, and probably injuries because injuries happen when players are fatigued. So how, how are the Islanders going to overcome all of that? They're not. So if, if I'm Lou Lamorello, I'm going to see who do I have that's either out of contract or see who wants to take a contract. Kyle Palmieri, not having a great season, but does somebody want, want, to, want to trade something for him and, and say, all right, you know what, we'll pick up his salary because he just signed a three-year deal after last season. So he's got two more years left. And if somebody's willing to take his salary on, then the Islanders can use that money elsewhere. Right, right. And, and hopefully get somebody younger, better. But that, that's, that's a possibility. I, I don't know their, their, you know, their, their contract situations and, and who, who is where. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's what Lou has to try to do is get some money off the books and see who is willing to give you some sort of, you know, whether it's a decent minor leaguer or a draft pick or something, but he, he needs to try to try to figure out how to, how to get some of, some of the salary off the books so that he can, he can, you know, get, get some, get some money as a weapon for, for the off season so he can prepare for next season. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, Islanders could pull it out, but they would need a, a go on a run they, they haven't had all season. So it's 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 to, it's improbable. Yeah. By the way, brother, I just yeah. we're running out of time, but I thought of this yesterday. I was watching a little bit of Pebble Beach golf tournament, which I normally don't watch. No. And uh, Haji won. What's his name? Haj. Hoji. Hoji. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. He won by two shots. I think right. So I'm watching this, and I don't. And I'm listening to uh, Nance, and he's with, uh, I forgot who he's with. He's with, there's a woman there, too. And who's, I don't get any of his names. I only know Nance. They should have a contest where, like, they, they usually come in, like, the 14th or 15th hole. They should, they should go back, like, to the second hole and, and bring on, you know, duffers like, you know, Uncle Dan or one of our cousins who, can't, who play golf, but they're not really great right. golfers. And they should judge. They should be the announcers for, like, a hole. Like here's the second hole. Everyone who comes through will get announced by Dennis Cunningham and Kevin Leonard, or something. Who are cousins? Um, something like that, where they just you know don't have that expertise of being a golf I, announcer, I but being know. a golfer. Um, it's just something I thought of as I was watching it yesterday because they're all the same. They're also well, if he gets there, was, there was a, a dangerous shot in that tournament. I don't know. Did you see the shot that Spieth hit on Saturday? I think it was. No, I didn't see that. He he had a lie that was. So close to the edge of a cliff, his front foot. I mean, he couldn't even put his. And they were, there's a there's a big drop there too. Sixty feet. Yeah. So if he would have somehow lost his balance, he's going over and he's dying. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like he was that close because obviously he decided to play the shot. He didn't. Right. And, but as soon as he hit the ball, he was backpedaling. Yeah. Well. So I mean, I, I was like, okay, yeah, he he obviously thought he was they, safe enough to play the shot, but they should at least he also have, thought it wasn't it wasn't all you know so safe that he shouldn't. Uh, they should have like a guy the hell out of there. They should have some sort of net netting there. So if he does fall down, it's only ten feet. It was you know, and then you get a rope and pull. Crazy him up. looking to see a golfer backpedal like that immediately yeah. after hitting a shot. Anyway, that's just my idea to make golf more fun for people like me. All right, well there you go, bro. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Oh, let's talk uh, quickly, brother. The FA Cup. Well, wait, wait. But let me just go. Uh, N- NBA trading deadline is Thursday, brother. Okay. Well, uh, the Nets have said in no uncertain terms they are not trading James of Harden. Of course not. Um, he wants to stay. They want him to stay. Uh, so, so the Nets will be intact. The big three will stay as the big three, unless the Nets somehow get overwhelmed. Um, the Knicks. There is a lot of chatter that the Knicks could acquire uh, Russell Westbrook from the Lakers. And the package would include Evan Fournier, Kemba Walker, and some probably, you know, uh, uh, there would be other players involved. 
But the Knicks will get back Russell Westbrook and a 2027 uh, first-round pick. 2027. It sounds so far away. In fact, it's five years away. Um, I, I kind of like this deal because Westbrook can't play with Anthony Davis and LeBron James. And he Westbrook has had a bad season. But Westbrook has also due 40 something million dollars next season. I would take his odious contract just to have the point guard position be settled for a year if I'm the Knicks. And, and, and if Westbrook plays well, then fine, you re-sign him. But I don't see the, the harm in taking one year of, of Russell Westbrook just as, as almost like a tryout because he really has been bad for the Lakers this year. And that it gets it gets him out of the Kemba Walker deal, which has been which has been a disaster for the Knicks because Thibodeau doesn't like Kemba Walker for whatever reason, and Kemba's had knee issues again. Uh, and it gets him out of the Evan Fournier contract, which was four years for seventy two million dollars, which they signed in in this past off season, and it, it it hasn't been a good contract for the Knicks because Fournier hasn't been the player he was expected to be. So, ba- so it so it's, basically get rid of a couple of contracts, get a it, big it would, one. It would solve it would solve problems for both teams. Yeah, and it could potentially fix the Knicks point guard situation, which has been a problem maybe for maybe since Jeremy Lin was here 10 years ago. We uh, we celebrated Lin sanity. But uh, that was that was 10 years since ever since then. The Knicks point guard, it hasn't been a strength. So, you know, anyway, but that's Thursday. We'll see what happens. That's uh, that's we'll that's see. when the deadline happens. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see where that goes. By the way, Tim, I don't know if you heard this, but What's that? our show from the Press Box, which is here every Monday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., yes. uh, hosted by myself, Rob Leonard, you, you, Tim Leonard. Yes. And yes, we are brothers. Um, I'm aware we, I host we, the show. We, we've been such a good lead-in for Big Ed Newlands. Big Ed gets phone calls. Big Ed gets – we set him up. And All these the, people call him Big Ed. Why don't you Big call Ed, us every once Big, in a while? Now, ladies, I have to tell you, Big Ed's married. So, you know – you might have heard some stories from the old of, days. There's a lot of heartbreak I'm hearing in, on my headphones. You know, I, I know you, a lot. Of, you might have heard some of the old stories of Big Ed and uh, NYG and uh, you know the Jacks and Cokes and the bars and everything. No, that doesn't uh, happen anymore. He's happily married. So, just to let you know, Big Ed wants to hear about the FA Cup before we go, bro. Yes, of course he does. What do you got, brother? FA Cup, Nottingham Forest with the big, uh, the big upset. One of the big upsets of the of the weekend. Um, just demolished Leicester, four to one. Uh, that's 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 a that's a championship side beating beating a Premier League side. Also, Middlesbrough, my man Coxie's club, the Borough, okay, defeated Manchester United. It was one one after overtime, eight seven in penalty kicks. The Borough will advance, and the Borough will play Tottenham because Tottenham beat Brighton three to one. Two goals for Harry Kane, brother. Liverpool defeated Cardiff City right. three to one. Chelsea and West Ham. Both needed very late goals, stoppage time goals, to beat minnows, as they call them. Right. The, the West Ham beat a team I've never heard of. Kid is something or other. Okay. And Chelsea beat another team. The that, minnows. That nobody, minnows. Like, like they were like Division 5 or something. Isn't that Like the, guys who have uh, real jobs uh, and play soccer. That's the boat on a... Uh... On uh, Gilligan's Island, Gilligan's yes, Island. yes. So they call the small teams. They Nottingham call them minnows. Forest, Isn't that, wasn't that like a thing in... What was, the, what was the thing in Robin Hood? It wasn't Nottingham Forest. Was Sherwood Forest. Sherwood Forest. But Nottingham was part of it. But, yes, uh, Nottingham is, is – um, they, they are an old 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 name club, but uh, have not been a top club for a long time. Okay, that just about does it for our show. Coming up next at 10 o'clock is Big Ed. If you want to hear the show again, please do. Go to our, our – go to anywhere. You get um, podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker, WHPC, uh, nccradio.org, I should say. Yeah. Thank you for uh, calling in, or not calling in, but uh, thanks to Phil Starrow Stout in Pebble Beach listening in. And he's in Pebble Beach? He's or? in Pebble Beach right now. That's so. in California, right? I think it's Pebble Beach. Isn't he in North or South Carolina? Uh, yeah, he travels, man. Yeah, all right. Good for, good for Phil. Anyway, take care and bye-bye.